Hey guys, this is Sonia with Talking About Talking Speech Therapy and for today's video I have brought you to my kitchen because we are going to be making a pumpkin pie and we are going to be using that with our AAC devices. So up here I have my Project Core static board and then I have a Touch Chat static board. This is the 96 location. I promise I don't favor this more than any other type of system. It just has a lot of the core vocabulary that I'm gonna need for today. So I'm gonna probably be using mostly my touch chat board while I do this. Um, as part of this lesson that I made on my Teachers Pay Teachers account, making a pumpkin pie, I do have uh, the fringe vocabulary for you guys as the visual images that you'll need. And then I made some posters and the posters outline what the fringe vocabulary is, are going to be. And it's broken up by food cooking utensils, and then what you do when you're done making that delicious pie. And then um, I also have the core words that we will be targeting today. I'm hoping to hit all of these in my lesson today. I may not, but you can with this baking activity that you're doing. And I'm sure you can hit more core words. These are just the ones that I outlined specifically. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm probably not going to use these in the lesson, but I'm just gonna hang them up to get them out of the way. So I'm using the Libby's pumpkin pie recipe just cause that's what I'm used to making. If you guys have another one that you want to do, that's fine. But this is what I did use for the worksheets that I created to go with this activity. So the first thing that we need is three fourths cup granulated sugar. So we need three fourths cup granulated sugar. And the kids' handouts have the numbers on there, so they'll be able to have those fancy numbers on there when they're doing this worksheet or this activity with you guys. All right, so I have my 1 4th cup measuring for my sugar. And I'm going to go ahead and I need three of these. So I'm going to put one in. And I still am going to need more sugar. So I'm going to get more sugar. Two, and then I can ask my students, do I need more sugar? And then the appropriate response for them would be to indicate that yes, we do need more sugar. I'll go ahead and get my three fourths cup. I have to have a sugar on there, that's what makes it good. So I have my three fourths cup sugar, and then next, I need a half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to get my teaspoon for salt. And now I need salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pour my half teaspoon of salt. And I want to put the salt in. So I'm gonna put the salt in. And then next after that, I need to get my teaspoon of cinnamon. So I need cinnamon and I have my cinnamon. I don't remember how much was it? It was a uh, one teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay. So I'm going to put my cinnamon in. There's my one teaspoon of cinnamon. And then next I'm going to get a half teaspoon of ginger. So now I need my ginger. And I think that was a half teaspoon. I'm gonna double check it just to be sure. Yep, half a teaspoon of ginger. Okay, I'm going to put my ginger in my bowl. And next I need a uh, four teaspoon of cloves. So I'm gonna get my spoon and I have a half teaspoon for my cloves. And I'm gonna ask my students, do I need a half teaspoon? And then I would expect them to say something to me like, 
Stop! No. Because it was not a half teaspoon. If I remember correctly, it was a fourth teaspoon. So I'm gonna get the fourth one and then I can ask again. Do I need a fourth teaspoon of the cloves? And then we can expect them to say go or indicate yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my cloves and I'm gonna put my cloves in. Oops, poured a little too much. Put some in the sink right there, it's not too strong. Okay. And I just put my cloves in the bowl. All right. So moving on to the next part. So I put in my sugar, my salt, my cinnamon, ginger, and cloves. And I put that in a small bowl. And now I'm going to turn my spoon. Look at me turn my spoon. And I actually had a spoon up there too, so I should have pointed it out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this to the side. So I have the dry ingredients done. And now I need to get my second bowl. And in my second bowl, I'm going to beat my eggs. So I need to get eggs and put them in my bowl. And I'm showing you guys right here that I have my two eggs. I'll go ahead and crack those and put those in the bowl. I would have pointed, but I have egg hands and I'm kind of a clean freak. So I have my eggs in the bowl. And I'm gonna wash my hands really quickly. measuring spoon to turn in the batter and mix my eggs up. Okay, so there we go. All right, the next step is that we need to get the pumpkin and we need to put the pumpkin and the sugar and spice mixture. So I need my pumpkin and I need my mixing bowl full of my sugar and spice and I need to put it in my bowl. So let's go ahead and open my pumpkin. I'm going to open my pumpkin. Okay. And it is the entire can. So let's go ahead and put the entire can of pumpkin in And you guys will be a little bit better prepared and have the adequate utensils unlike me who apparently didn't get everything I needed. But that's okay because we are making it work. <laughs> okay, so I put all of my pumpkin in the bowl with the eggs. Okay, so now that I did that, if I read the directions, it wants me to also put in my spice mixture that I made. So I'll go ahead and put that in there. And then I'm going to turn my spoon. 
to mix it. And I could ask my students, do you want a turn? Would you like to take a turn mixing? So that would be something that I could ask them. I could walk around and I could show them while I turned my spoon. And again, I'm trying to hit as many of those core words that I outlined. It's going to be different every time you do the lesson. Those were just some of the words that I knew would get hit if you were doing this particular lesson. Okay, and then the last step says that I need to gradually stir in my evaporated milk. So I need to put my evaporated milk in here. So I'm going to open it and I might ask any of my students if they want to help me open my evaporated milk or if they are not old enough to do that then I would do it myself. Let me just make sure I'm clean it. Okay and honestly if I was making this pie at home I'd probably be using my KitchenAid mixer, but for this lesson, I am not for you guys. So I'm going to gradually stir in my evaporated milk and I'm turning my spoon. I'm gonna go ahead and stop to put more evaporated milk in with the pumpkin mixture. It would work best if you guys had a big core board while you were doing this lesson, or if you had an aide sitting with the student and modeling with the student while this lesson was done. So that way they're able to see this because my pictures are small and I know that. I have a big core board but it's not with me right now, so I can't use that in the video. All right, so I just have a little bit more evaporated milk to put in. And I'm gonna continue to turn my spoon. Okay, I put all of my evaporated milk in. Alright guys, so that is everything that you need for the pumpkin pie, except for of course our wonderful shell, which I did not make from scratch, <laughs> okay, and I need to put my mixture in my pie shell, so I will put my mixture in my pie shell. I'm going to pour that in very carefully so I don't spill it everywhere. Okay. And then the last step would be to put my pie in the oven and to bake it. And when I'm done, I will have delicious pumpkin pie that I can eat and if I want, I can put some whipped cream on my pie when I'm done. So that is how we could use our AAC while we're making a pumpkin pie. There's so many opportunities to be able to use those core, to use that core vocabulary. And then I did include the fringe vocabulary in the activity that I made on Teachers Pay Teachers as well. So if this is interesting to you, please feel free to go to my Teachers Pay Teachers page. I will make sure to include the link for you guys and check out the activity. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you think that maybe I could have done something different, I'm open to suggestions. Let me know what you guys think. I do plan on making more cooking lessons for cooking with AAC. So I will, as I make those, also do videos as well to help you guys with those. So thanks for tuning in and you guys have a great rest of the night. Bye.